Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. We appreciate you joining us. We have first rounder Adafe Owe, as well as Coach Don Martindale available for you. Just a quick reminder, if you can utilize the raised hand function, we'll be happy to call on you. We'll get it started here with Jamison Hensley. Hey, uh, Wink, uh, when, when they talk about uh, OA, they, they, they talk about off-the-charts athleticism. Uh, is there anybody during your time that can compare to, to what he has been able to do as far as athletically? You know, I, I don't sit and look at it that way, Jameson. That's a good question. I know he had, uh, you know, amazing numbers coming out uh, as far as athletically, you know, from the workout uh, but um, this guy is special, and I can't wait for the, this this city to see how special he's going to be. I mean, it's a it's a thing where you know, like some people you know talk about sacks because you know that's fantasy football and that's what everyone wants to talk about. But this guy brings so much more to the table than that, and I know the sacks will come, and when they come, they'll come in bunches because there's been plenty of players who've been all pros and, and, and Hall of Famers, if you will. I mean, Lawrence Taylor, his junior year, he had two and a half sacks. That's just one. Uh, Richard Seymour, for example, he had, a, he had a sack and a half coming out from LSU. Uh, who was a guy? Uh, Donnell Hunter had, had a sack, I think, coming out. And, you know, like that's the biggest thing that everybody's asking, that have asked me about so far. But what he does when you put on the tape is there's no one that I saw at that position that gets to the football as fast as he does and plays as hard as he does. And I think the thing that this city is going to really love is when he gets there, he's not in a good mood. So I'm really excited to work with him. He's had, uh, had a great interview in the process. You know, we're not one of those defenses that just one front, one coverage. You know, we do some things a little bit differently than most. Uh, he understood the concepts of it. He's, he, you know, he's, he's looking to get into the playbook right now. Um, and he, he's, he, this is a smart, fast, uh, really good outside backer who knows how to set the edge of the defense. And uh, uh, we can't wait to, to see him when we get, get everybody there. We'll go to Ryan Mink. Yeah, Wayne, can you just talk about how Odafe uh, and his versatility is really a good fit for your defense? What makes him such a good fit for your scheme? Well, Ryan. you've heard me say many times, Ryan, that, that uh, this is a positionless defense. So we have guys playing all over the place. And with his athleticism that we've already talked about, he can play a bunch of different spots. You know, we'll start the whole thing out slow and get him going, but uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with him, not only on first and second down, but uh, especially when we get to third down and uh, move him around and, and uh, we'll create our matchups from there and, and, and watch him go to work. Kevin Richardson? Adolfe, uh you had two former uh, teammates from Penn State who uh, uh, Baltimore born and raised uh, who played with you on the defensive line, P.J. Mustafer and uh, Ellison Jordan. Have they reached out to you about the city? Uh, yeah, uh, my, my, my teammate, uh, P.J. Mustafer, he actually uh, was, I think, born or he, he lives in Owings Mills. So uh, he always just told me, you know, I'm going to enjoy it. It's going to be so fun, and, you know, it's a beautiful place. So, uh, yeah, I've talked to uh, P.J. Mustafer about Baltimore and just the, the Maryland life. Kyle Barber. Adafe, congratulations on being drafted. Uh, the Ravens have not taken many edge players in the first round, and the ones that they did uh, have had significant history with the franchise. Peter Ballware, Terrell Suggs. What does it mean to you joining those names as a first-round pass rusher for the Ravens? Uh, it's an honor, you know. Um, uh, it's it's really an honor. I'm, I'm lost for words because you know, starting from you know where I came from and my journey from my journey here is just you know, who, who would have thought? But you know, I worked hard and I put I worked a, like very, a lot of hours to put myself in this position, and um, I, I believe that I'm, I'm an intriguing player. And you know, I only my, my best years of football are ahead of me. So you know, it's an honor to be in this position. Gustavo Salazar. Hey, Wink, I have a question for you. Uh, was there like a specific moment when you're watching tape or something? Uh, well, I don't want to say like a turning point, but something that stuck out where you were like, oh, my gosh, yes, I want him. Like, uh, I want to say like when you fell in love with him. Gustavo, are you down at the stadium? 
Just, uh, that's my backdrop. I, 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 I wish I was there. Right. I'm, a high tech, I'm a high tech guy. I know, guy. I know that's just your backdrop. Your backdrop. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that, you know, like I said before, when you see, you know, how he get, gets to the football, you know, and closing down the line of scrimmage and things like that, you're like, wow. Because uh, he does it, and he and he does it with uh, bad intentions when he when he gets there. The thing that stood out to me with with uh, Odafe is his play on first and second down is so much further ahead than most guys you watch coming out of college, because you could tell that he made it a priority uh, that uh, he was going to set the edge of the defense, and that's that's big in any defense, but especially ours. And uh, and how competitive he is! Uh, you you could just see on every play he was going to compete, and uh, like, I, like like I said, it's just it's one of those things now that we just can't wait to get rolling and and, and get him in here and get get going. We're finally close to playing football again. Go to Garrett Downing. Adafe, I'm sure the last, uh, you know, 24 hours have been a whirlwind emotionally and, and just kind of craziness. Could you talk about what it was like as you were getting, uh, as it was getting close to, close to time for the Ravens to pick and what was going through your mind and take us kind of behind the scenes of that moment? You know, it was just a whole bunch of emotions. Like I was telling people that, you know, that, that 30, you know, 30 picks before you was probably the most, you know, anxiety like driven you know position I've ever ever been in because you know you just wanted to be off the board you know regardless of where you wanted to go but I always knew that you know Baltimore was somewhere I wanted to go Baltimore was somewhere I could see myself in so when I saw the first Baltimore pick come and my phone didn't ring I was like all right okay we still got another one we still got another one so when 31 came and I don't think I got the call as soon as as soon as the, the clock started, but once I got it, I was like, "Oh, stop! It's happening! It's happening!" And then uh, my family was uh, was a little loud in uh, you know the background, so I couldn't even hear it. I couldn't even hear the call, and it hung up. So I thought it was a spam call. I was gonna be really disappointed if I waited that long and it was a spam call. So um, I was like, "Guys, shut up! Shut up!" And then they called back. And then, uh, you know, the moment happened and, you know, everything was crazy. That's when you saw, you saw me dancing, put some moves out there. So it was a great moment. We'll go to Sean Stepner. Adolfe, that's exactly what I was going to ask you about. We all saw how excited you were and, and the dancing and everything. What was it like um, walking into the facility today? What were your emotions like? And regarding that dance, is that maybe a future sack dance we could see on Sundays? Uh, <laughs> now, nah, when I when I drove into here, it was beautiful. It was it was like a castle, you know. Just you know, just being introduced to my home, it was just you know a surreal feeling, surreal feeling, you know. So, you know, I love it here. I already love the facilities, so that's already a check, you know, in, in, in the box. But uh, in regards to the dance, you know, I don't I don't know what my dance will be yet, but. You know, if people like that, the fans like that, you know, I might have to stick with it. <laughs> Jeff Cerebeck? Duffy, um, who are some of the pass rushers or football guys in general that you grew up uh, emulating and sort of pattern your game after? Um, you know, yeah, uh, I probably, you know, watched a, a few guys that, you know, had similar uh, characteristics uh, as me. But, you know, as a competitor now, I'm in the league now. I don't want to give them that, uh, all that, that uh, you know, that praise yet. But I'll let them know who it is. <laughs> what a Ryan Mink. Yeah, hey, Udafe, uh, Wink said, you know, you're a guy who comes kind of with uh, bad intentions, you know, and, and you seem like you have a very serious kind of demeanor. Can you talk about where that comes from and, and kind of that switch that you flip on the football field? Um, yeah, I'm a real, I'm a real chill, chill, you know, laid back, cool guy. And I'm real nice. I'm cool. It's just my size of people, you know, and my face is real stoic. So, uh, but I'm, I'm a real guy, cool guy. But once I get on the field, I just know it's business. I know that, um, yeah, this is, this is my ticket. This is what I got to do to, you know, change, you know, my, my family's life. So I take it real personal, take it real serious. And, you know, being in the situation I am in now, I just feel like it's, the most conducive to be, you know, everything I think I could be. So, you know, I'm real competitive, real, real competitive, and I carry myself in that way.
Stan Charles. Adafi, congratulations. Uh, and I apologize if this has been asked before. I got on a little bit late, but I heard you last night talk about how you came to football late and how you love football. Could you talk a little bit about that? Like what, where, what age were you when you really tried playing football and how did that love come about? Um, so I was, uh, I was around probably, uh, I think 17, uh, my junior year of high school in Blair Academy. And, um, yeah, it was just, I was in that turning point of, you know, I had to, I had to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And, you know, I felt like, you know, as a basketball player, I was always that physical, you know, uh, elbow, set hard screens, you know, play hard D, probably get like five fouls at the end of the game. So I was, I was always physical, you know. So, um, you know, I wanted to give football a try. I felt like, you know, I had a better future there. And, you know, it, it was tough at first, you know, making that adjustment, obviously as a basketball player, you know, physically and obviously mentally. But, you know, once you just see results and you just, you just see the process and just always working with it and, you know, you just fall in love with it. So I would say probably after that first season, I, you know, I knew this is what I wanted to do. And I just, you know, took the, the bulls by the horn and, you know, the rest is history. Your rise. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. Thank you. Jonas Schaefer. Hey, Wink. I know you haven't seen him on the practice field yet, but uh, do you have a sense for which outside linebacker position uh, Adafi would be best at? And then um, just looking back at the film, I think everyone points to that Indiana game where he was so disruptive. Uh, did, you, did you happen to watch that game? And I guess what did you take away from the potential that he showed um, in terms of just being a, a game wrecker? I watched that game, Jonas, and 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 uh, you know the the game is is played about eighty percent of the time in subs, so he could play right or left end. That's another thing that stood out. Um, and you know, just like I told him when he got here, you know, he controls the narrative. So everybody's going to be asking this and and asking, you know, what position you play. Trust me, he he's going to know what everybody's doing on the defense by the time we get in there uh, and 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 kick it off this fall and. Uh, He's got the best coach in the league, and Drew Wilkins. Uh, uh, he he came back from his workout because Drew was there working him out as well. Uh, when he came back from his workout, he, there, he had two two things he wanted to tell me. Drew said that it was the best workout that he's ever seen live ever uh, uh, with the Dafe, and he said there's a place up there. Marisol probably knows where this is at, but there's a place up there that has the best ice cream ever. So that's the two things he got back from coming from Penn State. But uh, it, it's, you know, you, you watch his game tape, he's fun to watch. And when, it, when a guy's fun to watch and you, and you just don't sit there, because, you know, this is the time of year where you try to nitpick and critique. And, you know, especially the closer you get to the draft, you, you try to find reasons why you, maybe you don't like him or why you're so high on a guy and others aren't and, you know, things like that. And it's just there was no way you could do that when you watch his game tape. And it's not just the Indiana game. It's all, all of his games. So, you know, like I said, I, I think he's going to be fit perfect in our system. Uh, you guys know, all know his speed, and you know we like to pressure. So with that speed and the way we pressure the quarterback, I, I think he's going, to be a, 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 he's going to be very fun to watch. We'll take a couple more here. Jonas? Probably does. Thanks, Wayne. All right, bye, bud. We'll take a couple more here. Jeff Saribet. Wink, you kind of touched on it in that previous question with what um, Drew Wilkins said. But when you see when you see those numbers, his size combination, uh, how do you process a workout like that with such eye popping numbers for such a you know a bigger guy? Well, when when I got into the league, uh, my first five years, I worked for uh, Mr. Davis in Oakland. The first thing I process is, oh, Mr. Davis would love this guy. God rest his soul, you know what I mean? Just because, I mean, he's off the charts, you know, athletically with the numbers that he has. So, you know, that that intrigues you as far as processing it. And, and it matches when you watch the game tape. Some some guys don't. But you can see how hard he plays. And then you watch the workout, and then you know how fast he gets there and why he gets there so fast when you see those kind of numbers. We'll close it out here with Ali Barubi. Dafe, congratulations. Um, I, I think he was right about the ice cream at the creamery. It really is top notch. 
Uh, I wonder how much does this mean to you to be drafted in the first round to get to do that with your teammate, Michael Parsons, and how much did you guys push each other uh, during the pre-draft process to be your best? Um, yeah, it's definitely an honor to, you know, have uh, two guys drafted in the first. I, I don't think we've done that since uh, LeVar and Courtney. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing, you know. And it's a blessing and it's it's a good story to do it with my guy, you know, Micah, because ever since freshman year, you know, we've just been competing, trying to be, you know, the best, the not just the best player in our position, just the best, you know, defensive player. And I feel like that's what helps us, you know, just, just get better. We're not trying to, you know, look at the defensive end numbers and see if we can beat that, look at the linebacker numbers, see if you can beat that. We're trying to beat cornerbacks. We're trying to beat DB. We're trying to beat running back numbers. So. We just compete, and if he beats me, I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I got to beat him the next day. If, if I beat him, vice versa. So, like, you know, the, the pre-jab process, I, I wish we, we could have been filming it because, you know, there were some intense days where, you know, we were just battling and just trying to, you know, get the numbers we wanted. And I feel like everything came into fruition the pro day, and I'm, I'm happy he, he went to Dallas and, you know, and got everything he wanted. He's not mad about the 40 time. No, I know he is. <laughs> I know he is. He is. We lost. <laughs> Adafe, Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And congrats again, Adafe. That's it. Good to, to the media core, we really appreciate your patience.